I'm gonna show you how I built my wireless mechanical keyboard. Prior to setting this one up, I have been dismissing mechanical keyboards for such a long time, but it didn't start out that way. When I was younger and built my first PC, I got a Corsair mechanical keyboard with cherry brown switches. At the time, I liked it, or I was just hypnotized by all the RGB but I never really grew attached to it. And as years went on and it was time for me to upgrade, I looked at the ocean of mechanical keyboards to see what was the next step. And a while back I borrowed four boards from a friend that had like a ton of them with varying switches and layouts, but none of them felt quite right. I was like the Goldilocks of keyboards, never finding the just right one for me. So I bought a Apple Magic Keyboard and used it for everything. Now I like the low profile and the tactile feel of the Apple Keyboard. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, it gets the job done. I recently switched jobs to one where I work more from home, which has gotten me more interested in upgrading my home setup. And one bullet on the list being replacing my janky Apple Keyboard with something better. The obvious replacement being a mechanical keyboard. So I, I thought that maybe I just haven't understood mechanical keyboards and wanted to give it a second try. One thing I've overlooked with mechanical keyboards is the ability to tailor it to what you want. It's like going to Subway and building your sandwich or buying ice cream and picking the flavors. I can pick the flavors that I want my keyboard to have. I can choose the aesthetics and the feel of it. So. I dove, dove into obscure Reddit threads talking about the different types of boards, keys, switches, low profile, split keyboard, tactile, clicky, like just about everything I can find about it. And the board is like the bread. The switches are the filling and the keys are the condiments. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to deep into this sandwich analogy. I have a friend and he's into keyboards. A couple of years ago, he built a keyboard for himself and not just any keyboard, a split keyboard. During the years, I have heard so much about this keyboard and I have to admit, it's pretty cool. A split keyboard is like a normal keyboard, but split in two. There are a ton of different split keyboards out there. Some with lots of keys, some with less, some with LCD displays, RGB, wired, wireless. You can build your own from scratch or just buy one straight out of the box. There's also some other pretty neat benefits to using a split keyboard. It gives you a more natural position for both your hands and shoulders. It can help prevent injuries to your wrists from repetitive strain. A bonus benefit is that you can use them in any position you can think of. Usually with split keyboards there are more keys for your thumbs. A pretty unutilized finger for normal keyboards, at least for me. They barely get to contribute other than pressing the space button and some modifier keys. And I like my thumbs, they should contribute more. I want to try building mine on my own. Soldering together the pieces myself to get some practice with my soldering iron and just because it's a fun hobby project to do. I'm basically building the exact keyboard that my friend has so I can steal all his knowledge and setup. There are a lot of parts that go into this. And he was nice to put together a list of things that I needed to order to get started. I'll put the list down in the description if you're interested in building one yourself. The first decision is picking what kind of printed circuit board that you want, the PCB. Your board consists of conductive tracks that wire your components to one another in an electric circuit. You could design your own, but there are a ton of smart people out there who's already done that and provide the schematics online for free. Like this one that I'm using called Temper by Raid, Raid Show? Raid Show. And this one has 36 keys, 3 rows, 5 columns, and 3 thumb keys on each side. Now, this is just a schematic, but to get it printed and shipped to me, I used a company called JLC, where I had to paste the Gerber file, which is the file containing the schematics I found on the GitHub. It shows my specifications on JLC, like the color of the PCB and picking a lead-free surface finish. I wanted to get some special keys as well, that my friend also suggested. They are like tilted in a way to be more comfortable when typing, but these keys needs to get 3D printed and I don't have a 3D printer. It's on the giant list of cool things that I want. JLC also offers 3D printing though. So same way as I did with PCB, provided files, choose my specs, like what type of filament, and it's ready to be ordered. Another great website for this is splitkb.com, where you can find the remainder of the components that you need. The PCB is compatible with these nice nano branded microcontrollers that SplitKB sells but I thought they were a little bit pricey. So I went to AliExpress instead and found some cheap alternatives that also works. Your mileage may vary with these though. 
I ordered four of them and one of them were faulty. The rest of the components that you need for this build is power buttons, hot swap sockets, SMD diodes, microcontroller sockets, with headers, lithium batteries, switches are where you can go wild. There are so many different ones out there you can choose between and depending on your preference, you pick the ones that you like. To get pretty close to the Apple Magic Keyboard that I've been using for so long, I got some tactile switches from my split keyboard buddy. But the nice thing about the hot swap sockets that I'm using is that if I get tired of them or want to try something else, it's super easy to replace them. Ordering all the components and waiting a couple of weeks, or I don't even think it took a couple of weeks to get it here, I think it took days to get it shipped from Asia to my door, which is so surprisingly fast. And to assemble all my pieces, it's time for soldering. I haven't soldered that much in my life, mainly in like school from like 7th to 8th grade, so I'm far from having the perfect technique or like any technique at all. But practice makes perfect. And soldering is pretty fun. First of all, we connect these little diodes to the PCB. Diodes have unidirectional conductivity, making the current only pass in one direction through it. So you gotta make sure it's correctly oriented before soldering. And uh, I'm gonna be honest and say that I'm misleading you a little bit by filming this. I finished my keyboard prior to even starting this video. And I had such a good time that I want to share this with you as well. Five was the lowest amount of PCBs that I could order from JLC so I have some extras so I can show you how I soldered my components together. After the diodes we add the hot swap sockets that the switch is connected to. There are many of them but a lot more forgiving to solder than the diodes. And next up the sockets where the microcontroller will sit and matching headers that are soldered directly on the microcontroller to then puzzle them together. This is where I made my first mistake. I accidentally soldered the headers upside down and felt like too much of a hassle to try to get them back off so I started with the next one instead. And unfortunately the next microcontroller I tried was faulty. So I wasted both of my headers and with my final two microcontrollers I cut small bits of wires and soldered them in to make like makeshift headers. This was painful. The wires that I used was really difficult to fit into the socket without bending everything and starting over. But works well if you're out of options. All that's left now to add to the board is the on and off switch and the battery and you're done soldering. Now you gotta do the other side as well. There are ways to check if the soldering is properly done. One of the easiest ways being with a multimeter. Without it, troubleshooting is like conducting surgery with a blindfold on. One way of using it is that we can see that the current is passing through the circuit as expected by first checking the schematics to see which pin on the microcontroller is connected to which row or that the diodes are oriented correctly. Although waiting until it's all done and see if it works is much more exciting. Now to the part where your taste probably differs a lot from mine. I wanted my keys to feel like the Mac keyboard. Tactile but not too clicky. My keyboard buddy just happened to have these lying around and they're just like short of perfect for me. Since I got my caps 3D printed, I didn't have that many options on the color. In a perfect world, I would love them to be like some kind of cool gray or transparent orange, but that's maybe for the future then. With all the parts of Exodia assembled, my monster needs life. It needs firmware, software embedded into the hardware's memory to make it function as a keyboard, to make the sides be able to pair with each other and to the computer. And similar to the previous steps in this project, I'm just taking the steps that I find online and putting them all together. The firmware I found on the same GitHub page as before, downloading through what's called a GitHub action, which in this case runs a workflow based on the current code in the repository and downloads a file to the computer. Next step is getting this file to the microcontroller. Getting it to boot mode is done through double tapping the RST and ground pin on the microcontroller quickly with, for example, tweezers or something else that has high connectivity. Hopefully it will uh, appear as a device on your computer and you can just drag and drop the file from the GitHub action onto the board and that should be fine. So you do that for both the left side and the right side respectively and they should work. Otherwise you can probably find so many ways to troubleshoot this through like the GitHub page and Reddit and Googling. So hopefully it doesn't prove to be that much of a hassle. It worked pretty well for me so I didn't have to do much. Relearning how to type with these will be a journey. I've always been a less than efficient typer sitting at like 60 words per minute on typeraiser and I want to see if I can change that and break 20 years of 
bad keyboard writing habits and being able to type with all my fingers. I even went one step further and loaded my keyboard with Colmac, a different keyboard layout that is designed to be more efficient and more comfortable. For numbers, special characters, modifier keys, etc, etc, I have to utilize like multiple layers since 36 keys is not enough to fit them all. This is my current setup for the keyboard, although these will probably change a lot in the coming months until I found something that works best for me. And this is the speed that I'm able to type right now. So come back in about a year and I'll do an update into how my typing has improved since then. But now I've built my first mechanical keyboard.